right, I got three gates down and just one more gate to go before I'm probably done with upgrading coal gates. And it's just in time too, because I also have my 21 beam cannon now, and I'm working on my protector next, and once my protector reaches maybe 14 to 16-ish, somewhere around that, I will be upgrading the battering ram. And the timing is great, because just now, I recently started getting more and more hacks where I had to deal against the white coal gate. So by the time I'm finished upgrading my protector, I will probably then start facing coal gates where I have to use the battering ram. But by then, I'll be done the protector and will be upgrading the battering ram. So the timing all works out just fine. But at least for now, I've had to start to deal with some people where they have a white coal gate, and I have to go in and try to hack them without a battering ram. Because a level 1 battering ram isn't really that good against the white coal gate. And one such example of someone I had to deal with is Renshin, the level 53. And what he had is actually three white coal gates. Now, under normal circumstances, this would be a network where I just shouldn't be able to hack at all. Because even one white coal gate is going to give me a lot of problems. And this guy has three. But luckily, he sort of positioned his coal gates in kind of an awkward way. So, for the first co-gate, I don't have to deal with antivirus. So, with triple level 21 beam cannon, I'm actually able to take it down in a decent amount of time before the antivirus was able to spread. And I would say this is in part probably due to the fact that his higher level sentry is all the way at the back. And as you may know, higher level sentry actually spreads antivirus faster than the lower level sentry. So as a result, the antivirus didn't spread onto the Colgate enough, and I was able to attack it full force. But then secondly, once I get to this troll point, it's another sort of a weird decision I guess, because I was actually able to go around and attack it from both sides. So with the double blaster, I'm able to disable the Colgate, and thereby disabling regeneration, which actually is a massive damage boost. And since the other connection is a guardian, that means I actually get 4 slots plus 3 slots on the scanner, which is more than enough to take down a Colgate even if it's white. So white Colgates aren't immortal to beam cannons yet. They're pretty strong if I'm forced to use only 2 beam cannons, which is what I'm aiming for in my base. But against a network like this, where you can use multiple beam cannons, they aren't actually enough. I think you would probably need like somewhere around 16 or 19 Colgate to be completely immune to beam cannon, even if you have more than three against them. And once again, same concept here. You, I managed to just go around the Colgate because it targets the core first, which is then connected to the sentry, which is then connected to the Colgate. And as a result, I got even more beam cannon slots against the Colgate. And I just managed to take down three code gates that are all white, so level 13 plus, and I managed to do that with well over a minute to spare. So I would say the design of this isn't necessarily that good. So even though white code gates is supposed to give me problems, the design of the network does matter as well. And unfortunately, his design just isn't necessarily the best because there's too many ways to just go around it and double up on the Colgate with up to four slots. And that's what ends up making a really big difference, I would say. So I would recommend to him that either he makes it so that you can't just walk around and have multiple slots against the Colgate, or if he wants to keep it like this, then make the Colgate a higher level. Because if you look at the way I have it set up, you actually don't get a chance to double up on this Colgate. Because from here, the attack priority is on the Colgate, and these two are just passive nodes doing damage. Only once you break the Colgate can you go around it, and by then, it's already too late. And then once again, from this Colgate here, you still don't get a chance to double up on this Colgate, unless you first break this Colgate. But breaking this Colgate is once again, you only have one node, so you don't really get a chance to double up on that Kogi either. So unlike his network, there's no chance to have the 7 slots against the one Kogi, unless you're using something like shurikens. But if you're using something like shurikens, that's at least why I wanted the Maelstrom network, but I already talked about that in my last video. Although one potential area of concern might be this Kogi here, 
might not be high enough because once again, the antivirus probably isn't going to spread to this code gate enough and someone could probably just put 21 beam cannons, well level 21 beam cannons onto this code gate and take this one down. Although I do have a higher level antivirus spreading at the front so that might make a bit of a difference because he only had, I think it was between level 10 and 12 and I have a level 21 here. Contrast that with someone like Neo from Antarctica. And we can see that he is doing something similar, but instead of having the one gate and one white gate, he actually has two gates and one white gate. And the benefit here is that he is able to use a forward sentry at the front right here to help with the antivirus spread. So the antivirus is guaranteed to spread onto this code gate at the very least, even if the antivirus is all the way back here. But he does run into a slight problem though, because this forward sentry is only level one and ideally it should be a much higher level because otherwise I can simply do this with my blasters and permanently disable the code gate. So even though the antivirus will eventually get to that code gate, it's useless because the antivirus isn't going to be attacking because the code gate is disabled. And luckily, level one antivirus is so weak that even though I have a level one code gate attacking this code gate, the higher level one, it's still barely doing any damage to the code gate at all. So I'm able to just safely ignore the level one antivirus and I don't have to worry about an ice wall or protector or anything like that. Now here is where it gets tricky though, because this is exactly like my network with the passive nodes where you have one choke point and it's forced to attack the code gate with passive nodes doing damage with only antivirus. And this is really strong against people whose protector isn't high, like mine, because I mean, I guess level 11 sounds high, but relatively it's pretty low. And you can see that it's dropping pretty quickly against even just, I think his antivirus is level 20, or it might be level 21 now, but either way. Point is, the protector itself isn't good enough. So that's why I had to actually use shockers. And luckily for me, he has a lower level Colgate as his second Colgate. So I was actually able to break it, well, before my shockers ran out. Whereas if he had a much higher level Colgate, then I might actually be in trouble. And the funny thing is, he's actually forced to do this because ideally he should move his white Colgate, which is this one, to here where he had the gold Colgate. But apparently he can't because his higher level scanner here actually has more firewall than the gold Colgate. So he actually has to use the white Colgate here. And I guess that's one downside of the new attack priority update is that you're now forced to also account for things where you level your scanner so much that it has more firewall than the Colgate. And then from here, I make a slight mistake because I kind of assumed that the protector would hold on the resources, but as it turns out, it actually doesn't hold. I guess I overestimated a bit, because I was thinking that it's just resources and shouldn't take that long to take down. But I guess four nodes doing antivirus 21 is pretty big of a difference. And I was kind of distracted here trying to take full control that I didn't even notice the protector went down on the scanner, or not scanner, guardian rather. And as a result, I didn't actually manage to get the resource cap because I wasted time trying to take full control. Whereas otherwise, I probably would have been able to go ahead and got the full resource cap anyways. And when my higher level protector is done upgrading, this wouldn't be a problem anymore. But yeah, as you can see, the Colgate definitely does make a difference though. Because of these high level Colgates, even though it's not even that high at this point, one mistake and I don't get the full cap. Because with these code gates, every second counts, and I can't afford to make mistakes like that. There's also a third strategy that I can employ against the white code gate though, and I demonstrate that against Coat. And that is using shockers. Because the main benefit of shocker, I guess, is that it allows for an extra slot. If you only have two slots attacking a white code gate, that's quite a bit of a long time. And if you take a look at my spreadsheet calculation, it would be a whole 35 seconds for even level 21 beam cannon to take down a level 13 Koge if you have only two of them. And that's quite a bit of wasted time. But instead, if you had three beam cannons, then you see that the time actually dropped down dramatically to 19.3 seconds. 
And then if you also disable regeneration, then it's even shorter to only 13.9 seconds. And that's the exact approach that I'm going to use right here, is that I'm going to just spam Shocker against this white Colgate. And my Shocker is only level 5, so that means that I have to waste a lot of them. But I did bring 5, and as long as I time them perfectly, that they don't do any antivirus hits back, I should be able to make it in time. And as you can see there, by using this strategy, I was able to break through the one code gate that he has, even though he was using my strategy the correct way. And I guess maybe I didn't necessarily need to do this, since he doesn't have a strong antivirus. His sentry is only gold, so that's somewhere between 16 to 18 ish. And my protector might have been able to hold long enough for that. And as we can see here, after I take full control and then capture all the resources, I actually do have some time remaining. So it does take 30 seconds and I saved about 20 of them, but with one minute remaining, maybe I could have afforded and not wasted the extra compilation time against the Colgate. But at least it's good to know that this is something that I can do if I have to run into a situation like this where they have one Colgate and I have to take it down with beam cannons only. So, I don't know if there's like a moral to this story or not, maybe there is, maybe there isn't, but I just thought they were kind of interesting because they actually forced me to use slightly different strategies as opposed to the standard old beam cannon protector ice wall that I tend to use against most of my routine hacks that I don't really show. And I would say it's a good change of pace, and I like that because it keeps me thinking, keeps me on my feet. Make sure that I don't get too complacent and screw myself over like what I did in my big first small pond video. So there's that as well. And as for what I'm going to do as my next step, I haven't fully finished thinking up of what I would do yet, but it might not be the Guardians because the Guardians really take forever to level. And if we take a look at their wiki stats, if we want to level one Guardian to just level 19, it's going to take... 19 days and we don't have the stat for 20 and 21 but i'm assuming it's probably gonna end up being just a bit under a month to level one guardian to level 21 and they also give a lot of exp so probably the problem is by the time i level three guardians to a point where they actually kind of have an effect which based on nerd video seems to be around 15 to 21 ish by then, it's very likely that people already have high level blaster or shocker that can counter the guardian. So then that will kind of defeat the purpose of leveling them in the first place. So I'm leaning towards actually upgrading something like the turrets or maybe the black ice. And the thing is, it's kind of risky, I guess, because I don't really see that many network who level the turret. So I could very well be making a mistake here and just screwing myself over forever, if I do. So there's always that going. But it could be an interesting thing to look into though, simply because nobody else has done it. So it could be a fun experiment. So maybe I'll do it for science, but I should probably think more about it first. So first things first, wait for this to get to level 13, probably level this one to level 14, and then we'll begin the next phase. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, then please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you dislike the video, then feel free to leave a comment explaining why and how I can improve. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.